rising fuel prices and the cost of living, global warming and climate change, all reasons why you might choose to cycle rather than drive. But how much more efficient and cheaper is a bike than a car? We're gonna give the same amount of fuel to a car and a cyclist and see how far they can go. Before we crack on, if you enjoy this kind of video, you know what to do, like and subscribe. Now our test is a simple one. This is our car. Nothing particularly exciting about it, and the car is powered by petrol. Or gas, if you're American, which makes absolutely no sense, because it's a liquid. Um, it's short for gasoline. Still silly. We're gonna give the car five liters of fuel. Oh, look at that. And to keep things fair, we're gonna give our cyclists the same amount of fuel. Now, five liters of petrol is the equivalent of 40,842.7 calories. Which is, well, 470 of these, or, well, 125 sachets of this beta fuel. Now, obviously, I can't carry all of this stuff. But I don't need to for two very good reasons. Firstly, a human plus a bicycle is far more efficient than a car, meaning I'll require less fuel. But also, in addition to the food that I put in my body, I'm also capable of burning fat for fuel. And this is the same for any human. Regardless of how lean you are, you still have plenty of fat reserves you can rely on for energy. However, the cyclist is gonna get tired and Grumpy, however, the car will not. To prove this, we're gonna head west, as far west as we can. Alex driving with his five liters of petrol and me riding with as much fuel as I can carry. Let's go. Right, we're at the start of our uh... Route West. Yeah. Let's go. Um, wait, I've got to get in. Wait for me to get started up, will you? Have you got your bike started? Ready? Right. Oh, lovely. Oh. oh, didn't even wait. See ya. Right, wind is up. Heat and turn down. So. As we're making our way out of the lovely city of Bath, um, I suppose I should update you on what my driving style is going to be like today. So, I've reset all of the metrics that the car records and displays, and I'm going to be driving as efficiently as I possibly can. I'm going to have no heating, I'm going to have the windows up, I'm going to have no air conditioning. I'm going to basically make sure the car can use as little fuel as possible. And getting out of a busy city like this, it's not exactly going to be helping the fuel efficiency situation. Now through busy urban areas, the bike is much quicker at navigating through traffic than the car. But once we get on the open road, of course, Alex in the car is going to absolutely smoke me. But this isn't all about speed. This is the tortoise versus the hare, because I am far more efficient on a bike. And scientists have calculated that a bike and human is around 50 to 80 times more efficient than a single person in a car. Less than about three minutes worth of driving. Current MPG status, 20 MPGs, which is not looking promising for uh, considering how far we've got to go. I've already calculated that I need to be up in the 45s to 50 miles per gallons in order to make it all the way without running out of fuel. And currently I'm sat behind some bloody lunatic cyclist in red GCN kit. It looks actually remarkably similar to Ollie. I've got as much of the like electronic stuff turned off, I've got the radio off, I've got the sat nav off, and I'm gonna be community, well, I'm gonna be doing my uh, navigation via commute on my phone because it's not gonna drain the electricity power from the car. Incredible, I thought of it all. I mean, victory could just easily be mine now, I guess. Put it in D for daytime mode, or drive, as many people will call it. Let's get this show on the road. 
Come on, eh? It's like a race, but not a race, because racing on public roads is highly illegal. It's a sensible race. Progress is slow. No getting away from that. Right, window up, we're moving now. Every time we're uh, pulling away from traffic lights, any junctions, I'm literally breathing onto the throttle. It's as gentle as I can possibly accelerate. It's like a real good game, this. Right, around the corner. Carry momentum, carry momentum, Alex. Now we're talking. I mean, to be fair, this is bloody easy. Right, first climb of the day. You can see we've got Ollie in front, he's out of the saddle, he's shifted into the small chain ring. The speed has just dropped down significantly. Oh, this is really hampering fuel economy, this big climb. Uh oh. It's in eco mode. I've got a big lead on Alex getting through town, but now I'm on a big hill and I reckon he's going to catch me. Really got to gas it. Oh. Oh. So, now that we're out of the city and the built up bits, hopefully I can make a bit more progress, leave Ollie behind and uh, continue at a more suitable or efficient speed for the car. efficient you are will depend on person to person but as a general rule of thumb humans are said to be 24% efficient we use a lot of energy for other things such as well body temperature and well fueling your brain and maintaining balance so for every five joules that you burn one goes through the pedals hello everyone and welcome to learn Italian channel this is a free online Italian learning course you will learn how to say hello and goodbye informal and formally. My bike is fitted with a power meter, which means I can accurately measure the amount of force that I produce through the pedals, the amount of power I generate, and therefore the energy that I'm burning. And so if I ride at 180 watts, which is representative of what many cyclists can maintain, then I'll burn about 650 calories an hour. If I ride at 200 watts, that increases to 720 calories an hour, but I go faster. Please repeat after me. Yeah. Ciao. 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 Now, I know only about 30 seconds ago, I said I'm not going to have any heating or air conditioning. I very quickly realised that is a ridiculous idea. It's the UK. It's not exactly boiling hot compared to lots of places around the world, but I'm not sitting in this car for the best part of three hours with no air conditioning. I'd rather lose. Why on earth do we operate in kilometres in the cycling industry, yet in cars in the UK, we're still using miles, miles per gallon and miles per hour. It's actually really confusing. What does 650 calories look like? Well. It's equivalent roughly to two sachets of beta fuel, which is what I've got in my two bottles, or 500 grams of cooked rice. And at higher intensities, so typically the maximum intensity you could sustain for an hour and above, you'll be burning just glycogen, just carbohydrate. But at lower intensities, you're also burning your own fat stores, as well as any carbohydrate you've ingested. On the road again, on the road again. Oh, this is good, a big downhill section. Coasting all the way down. We've gained 0.2 miles per gallon. Gained another another tenth of a gallon. Another tenth of a mile per gallon. This is incredible. Over the course of a 100 kilometre ride, you may consume something like three or four sachets of beta fuel. And that, in price terms, is going to be similar to Alex's petrol. But Beta Fuel is a premium sports nutrition product that's aimed at, you know, peak performance. So at the other end of the scale, say if you, you know, ate rice, which you could do, well, a kilogram of dry rice can be bought for pence and it makes about three kilograms 
of cooked rice, which is equivalent to about 4,000 calories. But in the UK, you can typically see an average petrol price of around 163 pence per litre, which means the five litres of fuel that I put into this car earlier will cost you around eight pounds and 15 pence. If you start riding more, yes, you may start also eating more and buying more food to fuel the extra energy that you're burning. But the overall increase in expenditure is gonna be far less than the running costs of a car. And while Alex's car needs fueling, it's not the only thing. Alex also needs fueling. The proof will be in the pudding, whether I make it all the way to the end of our route to the sunny seaside in order to get an ice cream, or if I'm left stranded at the roadside and I'm calling Ollie up, asking him to uh, go and get me some fuel. No, oh, I love this game. We're about 60 kilometers in now, and by my calculations, I reckon Alex will have used more than half of his fuel. Now, I've burnt around 1,400 calories. So, it's got to keep, keep going. Under about 10 kilometers remaining. Remaining distance in terms of the fuel in the car, way, way, way less than that. And I'm actually getting quite apprehensive now. Uh, every time, I can lift off the throttle, even that tiniest little bit I am, trying to save that last bit of fuel. Alex must be like way ahead of me now, but I don't care, because I reckon I'm having way more fun. It's such a nice day. And look at this scenery. It's what it's all about. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, three miles. Alex must be absolutely running on fumes if he hasn't stopped already. On the other hand, I've got loads of fuel left. Speaking of which, I'm gonna have a gel. Keep me going. Oh, yeah. Right, I've made it to Western Supermare, although we've been on zero miles for absolutely ages. And I'm pretty sure a minute ago, I felt the car like conk out, even now. It still like goes a bit funny now and again, so I think any minute now it's literally about to give up. And I can feel it. It's just there's something not right with the car. I think we might have to give up. It's just like doesn't even want to go now. It's just like Bleh. right. I think we're gonna have to dive in here. Bloody hell! Oh, oh! I think we're game over. I think we are. I think we're legit game over. Oh no! <laughs> Oh, here he is. <laughs> Didn't get right. very far, did you? Well, I did get quite far, just not all, quite, not quite all the way. Well, I thought we were going to make it, right? And then, honestly, the car was just like, Bleh, and then it was all right. I've still got loads of fuel left. <laughs> well, that's not going to go very well in the car. Um, I tell you what, you fancy filling this out of fuel? Yeah, if you, if you give me a lift back home. Yeah, all right, fair. Deal. <laughs> now, I have to admit, I do love cars, and I appreciate that no bike can ever fully replace a car. Mm. But on the like chances where you can use a bike, they're great. And it's not just for economic reasons, but I feel happier riding a bike. And also, it's just great for your physical health, your mental health, which means I'm you know less likely to get diseases and things, which is going to be a burden to society in general. It's also great for um, saving the polar bears. Greta will be pleased. Greta will be pleased. Mm. She will. We'll, we should let her know. Anyway, um, I think we should well finish these and, uh, and head home. But if you enjoyed this video, well, you know, do support the channel, like, subscribe, and if you'd like some rather rather fancy Castelli 
cycling kit. Oh, we've got it in shop.global cycling network. So, uh, or you're in you get the driver's edition. <laughs> <laughs> do you actually want a lift though? Yeah, you do. I've got yeah. 100 kilometers. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably give you a lift. 